I installed a used outside wood boiler furnace to heat my house and greenhouse. Okay, I'm cheap. New wood boilers sell for close to $10,000 and then installing them can cost thousands more. I bought a good used wood boiler for $750 and then spent a few thousand more to install it. About 4,000 total. Now that includes the underground insulated lines, pumps, and radiators. Oh yeah, and that's Canadian money too. So less than 3,000 US currency for everything. Simple Tech, that's the name of this channel. And we have piles of other videos on heating, energy, growing, and greenhouse technology you can check out after watching this video just by hitting that free subscribe button I had been heating my house with electric baseboards and it was costing me about $3,500 a season. I'm estimating it'll take about 10 cords of spruce to heat my house for a season. And I buy that here at $130 a cord. Add renting a dumping trailer and fuel to pick up the wood and it costs me about $1,500 total for 10 cords of season spruce. Less than half of my yearly house heating cost. Now, to save just $2,000 a year, this really wouldn't be worth it. But the outside wood boiler furnace can also heat my greenhouses in the winter. Something that would cost well over $5,000 in electricity each to heat. The wood boiler will do that on the same 10 quarts. So now that's about $13,000 worth of heat. I'm getting for about $1,500. Yes, I know it'll use more wood to heat the greenhouses. But next year I can get oak for less cost than spruce if I cut it myself. Which oak has double the heat density. So in other words, it's like getting 20 cords of spruce for energy. $1,500 for $13,500 in electricity heat is now substantial. If I used electricity, it would be paid with after-tax dollars. So that wood expense is about $12,000 out of pocket extra. I'd have to earn about sixteen or $17,000 gross income before any income tax just to be able to pay $12,000. This is starting to really look like it's worthwhile. Let's see how I installed this boiler. New wood boilers from companies like Central Boiler Portage in Maine or Heatmaster can cost upwards of $10,000 Canadian. To be honest, these are great units and worth every penny. But I'm cheap, so I opted for a used outside wood furnace. Where I live, a lot of people have a boiler made by Ken Stephen Constructions. These boilers look cute, being round, and are built like a tank. I'm rough on things, so I like durability. New, they sell for well over $7,000 but I found a used one in really good shape on Kijiji for $750. Seems a widow didn't like feeding the furnace twice a day and just wanted rid of the boiler from her yard. SCORE! I had to borrow a trailer and drive about 500 miles to get it, but it was well worth the effort. Setup was easy. I cheaped out and used a gravel base. Yeah, I know most people use concrete, but I'm cheap and lazy. I had it checked out by a local professional installer and everything seemed okay. Now don't think buying the boiler is the end of it for cost. The insulated lines alone can cost as much as or more than the wood furnace itself, especially when you get a used wood boiler like I did. You can buy commercially made insulated lines and some are better than others. Some manufacturers use spray foam in a tube while others use air pocket insulated sheets wrapped around the lines. I needed about 150 feet of line to connect my house and greenhouse to the boiler and the cost of this was about $1,500 or more for one inch in material alone. The problem is every manufacturer used regular oxygen packs. Now I've seen packs burst more than once with super hot water. I wanted something more. I also wanted to add a water line from my house to the greenhouse within the insulated pipe. Three lines, not two. Two one inch, one one half inch. The heat from the boiler lines keeping the greenhouse water line from freezing. 
So I opted to make my own lines. I bought a Lumapex, a type of PEX that has an aluminum wrap inside, making it much more resistant to heat. The last thing I ever want to do is dig up my lines. A Lumapex cost me about $900 for 150 feet, two lines, and about another $100 for the half inch water line. Then I bought about $400 in waterline insulation and duct tape and insulated my lines myself. About $1,500 total, but I had better a Lumapex and a water line that won't freeze going to my greenhouse. Delivering heat from a wood boiler requires two things, a pump and a radiator. The pumps were easy, one for the house and one for the greenhouse. In the house, I used baseboard radiators to deliver the heat. At this time, I haven't finished the greenhouse heating, but I plan to use a radiant floor and one or two radiators with a fan on it to heat the greenhouse. The radiators in the greenhouse will be pretty simple, not much different than your car radiator. The house has been working pretty good, as we've had minus 30 degrees Celsius already, and the house stayed warm. This year I bought my wood. $1,300 for 10 cords spruce aged two years. That included loading, but I had to get my own dumping trailer. The trailer was only a little over $100 to rent. And add the gas, I spent about $1,500 there total. Dumping was easy. I had to cut the wood into usable lengths though with my own chainsaw. I didn't split any of the wood, and I'm really happy I didn't. I found the thicker log pieces last longer in the outdoor wood furnace, which is better to get through the night. The wood boiler gets well over 12 hours once you load it, so I find myself loading it in the morning and at night. If I'm going to go out and I'm going to get home late, I'll add some extra wood before I go, extending my time. Firing up the wood furnace was pretty easy. Toss in a few logs, some scrap wood, and a little cardboard. A torch got the flames going pretty quick, and the original fire has actually been burning now for about three weeks. I've been very happy with this unit. The air dampener works perfect, starting and stopping the fire to keep the right temperature to hold the water at about 180 degrees Fahrenheit and extend the life of the fire. Now this is a boiler, and boiling means water. Water evaporates when heated, so you have to add additional water to a wood boiler furnace regularly, as in weekly. With older units, you would just use a garden hose. Filling a boiler with a garden hose in minus 30 degree weather is a nightmare, not fun. Discussing this with my plumber, he suggested adding a fill valve attached to the return pipe, which would add water to the boiler without going outside. Genius! Now all we have to do to add water to the wood boiler is turn a valve inside the house, watch the boiler through the window, and turn the valve off when the water comes out the top. Easy! Yes, there are ways to automate this further, but for now, I'm happy that I don't have to deal with hoses outside in the winter. So operating this boiler is pretty easy. I fill the burn chamber twice a day, once around 9 to 10 a.m. and again at around 9 to 10 p.m. I move the burnt logs around a bit when I fill it with a shovel, and sometimes I remove a bit of ash. I just throw my ash into a big snow pile, making it safe and it'll disperse into my lawn in the spring. Yes, it's a bit of work every day to feed this boiler, but we haven't had to turn our heat on since the furnace started. We did keep our electric baseboards in place as a backup. I'm looking forward to hooking up the greenhouse in the next week or two, and a video of that is going to follow. Buying a brand new boiler and installing it with lines and radiators would have cost me well over $12,000 here. By finding a good used one, my total cost is about $4,000 Canadian, including the installation and underground pipes. Is this for you? That all depends on how much heat you need. If you have a large house, shop, or greenhouse, and live in a cold climate where you can get wood cheap, 
then this is probably for you. If you live in the city, probably not. I'm new to outside wood boilers. This is my experience. I'd love to hear any tips, tricks, or questions from you in the comments below.